Welcome back. You're watching Showdown, and I'm joined now here in the Sky News studio by Green Senator Lee Rhiannon. Thanks for your company. No. And Maverick Labor backbencher Ed Husick. Thanks for your company. Seriously, why do I agree to do this with you? <laughs> well, why? The question you've got to ask yourself. But uh, let's, let, let's, let's get into it. Now, who, who do I refer to as the minor party? <laughs> okay, so you're starting off on a good note. Well, the next question. <laughs> oh, I guess you're not a Queensland MP, although New South Wales got close. But serious question. The Labor Party is under pressure, Ed. Um, the Labor Party is in a position where you've got the Greens on your left flank, even though Lee Rhiannon is sitting on your right, uh, who are carving votes out of the Labor Party. Uh, you get them back in preferences in the lower house, but you are losing senators to the Greens. And you don't always get back preferences, and certainly not in the state of Queensland where they exhaust, uh, or in the recent New South Wales election. But at the same time as that, you're in such a, a, an awkward position that you need to watch your right flank against Tony Abbott, because if you, if you like, pander to the Greens too much, and that's what people would say you're doing on the carbon tax, you find yourself in a position where you're wedged. What do you do? Well, I think, I mean, that's just taking one uh, federal election result and reading a whole lot into that result and doesn't look at what's happened in years gone past. I mean, we certainly didn't have this discussion back in 2007 when we weren't in our own right, um, weren't in a minority government situation. And the other thing is, too, uh, a lot of the issues I deal with on, on the ground in my area don't necessarily have any impact on whether or not it's a left-right divide. It's more about what you do as a backbencher. So I, I know that certainly for the media and elements of the media, this is a really, uh, it's a type of discussion that could go on for hours, for days. But in terms of real politic on the ground, it doesn't have well, that. Well, it's going to go on for 13 minutes. But I mean, Lee, Lee Rhiannon, you'd agree, wouldn't you, that, um, I mean, it's no problem for the Greens. The Greens have been successful politically, whatever you agree or disagree on a policy sense, but Labor are trying to sort of hold these working-class electorates, um, whereas particularly inner-city voters are flocking to the Greens. Oh, yes, and I think what the Queensland election has shown, again, is that there's a deep fault line within Labor, both in terms of their policies and also their own structure that clearly need to be addressed. And as you said, we're picking up Senate spots from Labor and also lower house seats, which I know is what's got them particularly worried. We're obviously very pleased with Adam Bant uh, in the seat of Melbourne in the New South Wales State Parliament. We have Jamie Parker in the seat of Balmain and coming into the next election we've certainly got our uh, focus on a number of other lower house seats. But uh, right now there is this fault line that's very deep in Labor. But there's issues for the Greens as well, aren't there, in the sense that Success for the Greens in a bubble is one thing, but if it's success at the expense of, of what you might broadly term the other left of centre political party, you might take issue with that. But um, that being the case, if you are weakening that party, uh, then you are also putting yourself in a position where, you, where you're more likely to see conservative governments, even though the Greens, comparatively, within the broader opposition, are becoming stronger. But I think this is one of the things that recent elections have shown is that Labor does need to come to terms with the, the chances of it just um, governing in its own right is starting to become more and more limited. And really, they do need to face up that the Greens are part of the political landscape. We've been here a long time. We're growing. And I often feel that they still really do try and push us away, even though federally we've got an agreement, we work together, we're very critical of Labor on some other issues. Uh, something has to give. And Queensland once again has shown that in put that in very sharp focus. But I don't, look, I don't agree with that. that. I'll come back to my point. I mean, I think people read way too much into one result. Uh, let me take your example. You've talked. No, well, hang on a second. Hang on a second, Lee. You've talked about Adam Bant winning in Melbourne, where a long-term Labor MP, um, you know, left the void, and those type of seats are traditionally a much more open contest. And you talked about Jamie Parker in Balmain, but out west. Um, where the type of you know, constituents I represent don't neatly fit the type of inner city profile that Which you have. Which is why they look at your party with. and they think, yeah. why are you and going so, down a carbon tax? And so when you look at it, um, you don't, you know, the Greens out west don't crack anywhere. Well, the bandwidth that you sort of sit in is between 5 and 10%. I mean, there are much more conservative minor parties that you compete with in terms of slice of the vote than. Yeah, but you need to, but the Labour Party needs to pick up the seats and the votes in the inner city as well, and it needs to ensure preference flows. And if it's seen not to be pandering to green issues, I don't mean that pejoratively, but if it's seen not to be doing that, then it's going to find itself uh, in a position where those preferences won't flow. Uh, and at the same time, if it, if it moves in the other direction and tries to appease the Tony Abbott um, people that have considered themselves swinging voters, then it's going to find itself in a position where it's also wedged. It's an well, awkward one. But the situation in a minority government is you're in flux insofar as that you do have various pieces of legislation, various issues in terms of public affairs space that you need to negotiate issue by issue. Now, 
Uh, sure, we dealt with the Greens in terms of carbon pricing, but you look at the fault line in terms of differences, you know, um, your side of politics wanted you know, probably a $40 a tonne price. Um, you wanted to see a tougher line in terms of coal uh, and its use in generation of energy, or energy and electricity, and certainly I don't think you're enamoured with the steel transformation plan. I mean, there are three you points of difference. Well, itself. ultimately, you but what's your, what's your broad response to that, Larry? Well, I think that what we can see is that um, with Labor, that they, for a long time now, that they have been pandering to the big end of town and not looking after their working That's class right. base. That's not and, right. oh, it's absolutely right, Ed. And the New South Wales and the Queensland elections have put that into sharp focus. When you come forward with a plan to privatise public assets, the public largely can see through that these days because why are you doing it? You're doing it for short term cash and you're doing it to get a pile of money so there can be some poor barrelling. And these days the public are clued to that. Look, I'm not, uh, I, I think I've been on the record enough in terms of talking about the value of um, holding public assets in public hands but at the same time too, I'm not dogmatic about it. I think from time to time where um, there is a case that an asset doesn't need to be in government ownership. Frankly, who's ever talking about holding the Commonwealth Bank in, in public ownership anymore? You might have a, a view that says that you're happy with it, but most people, they don't. Well, Where essential services are the thing that I think a lot of people Absolutely. wonder about. And, and in my area, you know, I mean, I don't talk to the Greens about trying to get an MRI for Mount Druitt Hospital. I don't talk to the Greens about trying to improve or get strategies in place to deal with graffiti and vandalism in my area. I don't talk to the Greens about whether or not I drag suburbs out of the internet dark ages. I don't talk to them about trade training centres. Maybe it'd be good to, well, because this, I don't, is, this But is the thing is, I don't need to... Sorry, I'll just I'll, I'll respond very quickly to that. I just get on with the job as a backbencher. I'm happy to talk, and my philosophy is you work with anyone until they give a reason not to, but frankly, I've got a lot on my plate that I just deal with as a backbencher. Well, keep, keep working hard on that, because judging by what happened in Queensland, you want to make sure you've still got a job by the time of the next election. What's the margin in Chifley? 13. Okay, so that could be tight. Um, <laughs> Lee, Lee, Lee Rhiannon, let me ask you, I mean, I, I mean I'll, I'll let you respond to that first up, but, but second, I'm really interested in the Greens' dilemma here, because the more that you slice away from the Labor Party, the weaker they get and the more likely that the Conservatives win. Now, what do the Greens do then with Conservative governments? Do you, do you risk doing what the Democrats did and find themselves getting accused by their base of not staying true to what they believe? Or do you be a blocking agent for a Conservative government uh, and deliberately try to tear it down, uh, whether that works or doesn't? Well, we get on working, delivering on our policies, and I think we've been very solid on that. There's obviously very clear differences between us and how the Democrats um, mm. work, because it was when they came forward with the GST and the famous handshake between Meg Lees and John Howard, many people saw that it was downhill after that, and that's certainly not where we've gone. And there was a very clear leadership from Senator Bob Brown and Christine Milne on the carbon tax, and we were able to deliver on that. So, so, so can I just jump in and ask yeah. a question, though? So, so for example, if, if Tony Abbott wins the next election, making it all about the carbon tax, mm. and if he wins it in a landslide, the Greens' view, which is one I have some sympathy for, even if I may not agree with it personally, the Greens' view is one of, well, you campaign around your defence of that, so your quarantine of seats will always vote in that way. Simple as that. Well, yes, we, we, that, that's what we are out there campaigning for. We stay true to our policies and principles, and we will go forward on that. Yes, we may be eroding Labor in some places, but we're clearly, uh, we have, like, we've got about 10,000 members now. They're deeply committed to the Greens. Some of them are former Labor Party members. Why have they joined the Greens? Is because they're deeply disillusioned with what's gone on with Labor. And with all due respect, Ed, just in how you delivered your answer is that you gave your personal position on public assets but you know you are part of a government and you are part of a party that in Queensland and New South Wales has moved away fundamentally which many people saw as the core position of Labor is out there defending but public Lee, essential services. A lot of services. people would say that the biggest problem that the Labor Party are facing is that they are doing what the Greens want rather than they're not doing it. So they would argue that moving away from you know, the, the centre ground is the reason for their problems, whereas you're saying the opposite. Well, I mean, that's a construct that we have regularly hear from Tony Abbott and the Conservative side of politics, and with all due respect, some um, elements of the media, that that is a narrative that some have tried to develop. But I think that's far from the truth. And, I mean, certainly recent events show that. You can't say that we're dictating to Labor. I mean, we're very critical of a lot what they do. Excuse me? Oh, look, uh, certainly there is, I mean, we've already been talking about it tonight, convenient interpretations about uh, what has happened in immediate or, or uh, you know, sort of distant past. Um, the key is 
in a situation where we're at with minority government where we have to deal with different people, we'll have agreements on some issues and disagreements on others. I mean, as to the point about uh, myself as an individual MP, I mean, there are a lot of people... I mean, the, the good thing about our caucus and in terms of the way our committee structure works is that we are able to have very frank discussion about where things head. But ultimately, but ultimately you have to find, um, you know, agreement amongst a broad, broad range of people. Some people will agree and some people won't. Okay, but let, we're let's, open, let's, and let me just make this final point. We're open about the way we do things in terms of, you look at our national conferences, you look at the way we operate in terms of you know, making the decisions that we have to. I mean, it's a far sight with respect um, to the Greens. Whenever, when you come back and tell us when you're going to have an open um, conference of the Greens... That's a fair point, isn't it, Olivia? Because yeah? you, you, you are quite closed know. about those sort of things for a party that generally is calling for things to be opened. Oh, well, well, firstly, we're on the record that um, our conferences, part of them have been opened in the past, and I understand, and that's up to the party, is that that will be opening up. But again... Ed, but what are them fully open? Well, I mean, Ed, what I, but, what gets Ed, but me your is... sin has become so stage managed because. No, it didn't. Oh, it's seriously, it is. Well, what, Ed, you didn't see the last national national conference. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know that so much is worked out between the factions before you even get there. I mean, you wouldn't deny that. There is, and you know why? Yeah. Because people yeah. have different. And that that's is what I mean, the. That's worked that out a, behind closed doors. But and that's you get the status to the of a mature. Whereas, whereas, you're saying, whereas the Greens have it out on the floor, if you like, so well, therefore you want to keep that in house. Um, well, firstly, I mean, I do think it's actually an interesting point because I am very committed to. Yeah. Openness, and I've actually raised that I think we need to work out to what degree that we open it up. But then, like what some party members have said to us, we're not MPs, we're not out there dealing with the media, I'm not going to feel comfortable about arguing my case. So individual party members have a level of a right to privacy if they're part yes, of a, a some, political some have party? Yes, some of them have raised it with me, because initially I was one, or, and I've changed yeah. my position slightly. So I do think there's some complexity there, but I do certainly think the openness of what we're deciding on and how we work as a party can still be achieved. Well, we've got, is, less, we've got less than two well, minutes, Ed. You've got, well. Let me jump in here. We've got less than two minutes. You talked about frank discussion about scenarios. I want to put a scenario to both of you. The polls don't change and Tony Abbott walks it in at the next election, maybe not as much uh, as Campbell Newman did, but nonetheless, landslide victory. He immediately moves to change the carbon tax. Now, the Greens won't move on that, I'm sure, um, but the Labor Party will be in an interesting position because if you've been all but wiped out in the lower house, uh, then your Senate team are going to be put in a dilemma there. Do you give him his mandate on that or do you block it and risk a double dissolution? Well, we're just going to have to... I'm not going to engage in hypothetical stuff. Well, well what would be your view? It's a fair question. I mean, no, you, you must I'm have not. a personal opinion. What would you say in caucus? But, uh, well, again, I, what I say in caucus, I, I'll use your defence. Uh, I have been known to have very frank views within caucus, and I'll keep doing that. But I do it within just, the caucus. Just between the three of us, like what would what would your what would your position be in that situation? You've your, your lower house team is is a small or smaller than it was in '96. There's a clear mandate there for from, by, for Tony Abbott from the electorate. The Greens say they've got a small uh, constituency. You wouldn't call it small, but you've got ten percent or thereabouts, and your senate team are going to stick to what you know they want. But what about the Labor Party. Okay, but you've got your crystal ball, and you can you know, keep running with that. Uh, I still think there's a lot to run, a lot of you know, time to run through in terms of the way that we implement what we've put in place last year, and I'm going to wait and see what happens there. Okay, so, I so think you're the kind dynamic, of holding well, on for the ride and hoping well, the, that you can well, come the dynamic back. changes. You know, look, a lot of people predict the end of the world with all these different things that we've put forward in this parliament, and it hasn't come to pass. Okay, we've got would, literally 30 seconds. What would, what, if Labor moved away from the carbon tax, it would just disillusion their shrinking voter base even more, because that's the problem. What do they stand for? People don't know anymore. They don't seem to have confidence in their own position, be clear about their policies... When they even have something good, like the mining tax, they don't go out there and defend it and put it forward properly. All right, well, both of you will be hoping it doesn't come to that, but I, my prediction is that it will unless something dramatically changes. But John Howard came back from a worse position in 2001. We'll see. Ed Husick, Labor MP for Chifley, and Senator Lee Rhiannon from the Greens, thanks for joining us on Showdown. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for your company as well. We will be back at the same time next Tuesday. See you then.